Hello, welcome. In this tapping circle, we're going to be tapping on dealing with emotional eating. And uh, so welcome. I'm Esti Alina Turnauer. With me is my partner, Tina. And we're going to lead you through this tapping session. Just a little background about myself. I have a background in education and holistic health as a reflexologist and iridologist. I've been a certified energy... Should we start over? <laughs> no. Okay, we're going to keep going. Keep rolling. I've been a certified energy psychology and EFT practitioner for about five years. EFT is part of my personal daily routine to reduce stress and anxiety and uh, dealing with annoying things in my life. I've worked with people struggling with compulsive hair pulling, overeating, um, date rape trauma, relocation anxiety, public speaking confidence, fear of dogs, and other topics. I got into EFT because I got relief from a compulsive behavior and the stressors fueling it. So I decided to become a practitioner to help other people. And Tina will be monitoring um, the chat, that we don't have a chat. I'm screwing this up. Okay. So if we were live, <laughs> Tina would be monitoring the chat and supporting me. Now, Tina will introduce herself. Thank you, Esti. Hi. Thank you for watching this video. As mentioned, I am Tina. Full name is Tina BQ Tron. And um, the BQ is my Vietnamese um, first name. Short enough just to make it easier. And uh, just a, a size, quick side story. If you search Tina BQ Tron on the wide web, only one will come up. <laughs> yeah. um, I hey, so like, my name. <laughs> just like SD, um, I have I have a background, and um, my background was in a corporate world in the finance um, industry. I did that for twenty years, actually more than twenty years, and then. Um, it became too stressful, too hard as I climbed the corporate ladder to balance with uh, my uh, personal life. I have children and they are athletes who needed um, a lot of care because they have a full competition schedule. Anyhow, so I decided to leave the corporate world and um, look after my family and find a different type of work that allows for more flexibility. And in the process of searching for a second career, I came to realize that I was meant to be a healer since I was 16. The, the strangest thing is that I didn't remember all of that until I actually truly needed and listened to my inner voice. And so I have uh, become a energy psychology EFT practitioner since 2016. I have worked with a lot of people, but my focus is on helping working professionals deal with stress, anxiety, trauma, um, professional blockage, as well as um, sport performance. And that tends to my children being athletes. And so in a nutshell, that's my background. And once again, thank you for joining us today. Back to you, Esti. Great. Thank you, Tina. So before we get started, it's very important to be hydrated and to have water with you during the session. If you don't have water handy, pause the video, go get yourself some water and come back. Um, if you're not properly hydrated, you won't get the best results from the tapping. So this is really, really important before, during, and after to be really hydrated. We're working with the body's energy system. There are energy and the water in our body. So this is super important. And I, for those of you who might be new to tapping or EFT, emotional freedom techniques, uh, I'll explain a little bit about how it works and go through the points with you. Um, or maybe Tina wants to demonstrate the points and show you um, a map of the points. 
And that's something we can share with you through email as well, if you're interested in a copy of that. So EFT, as I said, emotional freedom techniques is part of energy psychology, which is a mind-body technique and uses elements of exposure therapy and CBT or cognitive behavior therapy to create quick and lasting changes. Talking while tapping, by, by tapping, I mean using the fingertips to tap on these acupuncture points that we'll show you, send safety signals to the amygdala. That's the alarm system of our brain, the fright, flight, freeze uh, response, so that the thoughts or re-exposure to potential triggers are no longer triggering. So there's a difference between recalling an event and reliving it and reliving the feelings that happened when it happened and simply re recalling it and telling it like a story that happened, okay? So that's the point where we want, that's the freedom we want to have. So with this technique, this is really important. We begin where you are. We start where you are. We don't try to whitewash our situation or our feelings or start with positive affirmations or pretend like stuff doesn't happen or we're not feeling what we're feeling. We will talk and tap on what we're actually feeling, be it frustration, shame, guilt, self-loathing, anger, whatever it is. And when we articulate and acknowledge what we're feeling, then we can begin healing. And that's where the shift happens. People often ask why we start with the negative, and that's why. Think of it as, I could say, raising the temperature, but say you're raising the pressure to be able to let the steam out, to release it from your body, from your body system. That's what we do. And as we tap, we can experience new insights and shifts in how we feel about our situation and begin to see new possibilities or begin to reframe how we view that situation. So trust in and have patience with the process. Okay. Um, Tina, would you like to show the tapping points and go through that? Would you? Okay. Yes. Great. Yep. Okay. I can do that. So as uh, you can see on the screen, there are various tapping points. The first one being on the top of the head, so use one or two fingers or even three fingers, depending on your selection. The first one being on the top of the head. And then we move on to the side, uh, the eyebrows, okay, right up here. And then the side of the eyes, under the eyes, under the nose, on the chin, on the collarbone. Oh, and by the way, you can do one hand, two hands, either hand okay you can even do that like alternatively you don't have to do it like this under the arm so under the arm you can do one um or the other okay or bear hug like this and what we are doing is we are using what's called the ef um clinical eft these are the points that are used in research done on eft to prove that EFT is a scientific um, modality. Okay. Middle finger, and then we skip the ring finger. We move on to the baby finger, and then we go to this point, which is called the nine gamut. And this point here, that's in the shallow soft spot between the baby finger and the ring finger, um, it covers the ring finger. And this is why we skip it. And um, the very last one, which is the very first point, in fact, to start, this is the side of the hand. This is where we start to state the situation, all right? So, but don't worry, we are going to call out the tapping point as we go along. And so even if you close your eyes as you tap, you will still be able to follow along. Um, before we start, though, I need to um, put out a, a, a reminder is that the thing with EFT is that it's extremely flexible. The words that the leader of the tapping circle say, 
don't have to be repeated exactly as is. Instead, SD is going to say something, but it doesn't suit my situation. However, a different sentence come up for me. I can say that one example is that she say, this desire to eat that is located in my chest, but I don't feel it in my chest. Instead, I feel it in my stomach. Then I would say this desire to eat more in my stomach. Okay. So once we start the, the, the circle, and I'm going to be at this echo, you may hear me say slightly different words. Okay. But that's quite all right. The other thing with the tapping point is that even though we follow the sequence, but for you, if you feel that there's a certain point that needs more attention, you can just stop there. Like for example, we have moved on to under the eye, but for some reason for you, you feel that you need to be up here on the top of the head, then by all means, stay there before you move on. All right, back to you, SD. Thanks, Tina. Thank you for mentioning again that this is an evidence-based technique because there are lots and lots of people out there doing EFT, different forms of tapping. Um, it's evolved from other techniques. And it's very important to know that this has been clinically proven in double blind placebo studies and uh, for its effectiveness. So that's the main reason why I chose to get certified in this particular form of EFT myself, as well as uh, energy psychology. Okay, so let's go on. Um, thanks again for that, Tina. So again, just um, to set expectations, what we're gonna be doing is an example, a template. I might be using examples from my own life or from things I've heard from other people or a composite of these things. And they may apply more or less to you and you can change things up um how how you see fit and just again use it as a template so this is an introduction we won't get be able to get very deep into the history of any particular eating pattern um, anything rooted in trauma for example would be best addressed in a one-to-one -one with a qualified therapist and or energy psychology practitioner we will begin to look at the use of food to numb or mask emotions and other needs and begin to unpeel the onion so you get some clarity and relief around this issue. It is my intention, it's our intention, that you take away powerful insights and begin to take on a more mindful approach to eating and the ability to tap on your own as needed. Okay, so emotional eating comes in different forms. Um, sometimes it's eating rather than feeling, right? To mask the feelings, what I call eating your feelings. Uh, it can be very complex, but it doesn't need to be. It could be something as simple as eating because I'm bored, um, guilty. Eating to try to meet some other unmet need, like thirst, again, guilty. Um, eating to relieve stress. <laughs> so there's some literature about eating and the use of, uh, you know, our mouth and eating and why that's um, calming or relieve stress. It has to do with polyvagal theory and this the, the perception of our body to stress and danger. That's a whole nother topic. But when I read that, I thought, oh, wow, it really makes sense that so many people eat as a way to relieve stress. And food cravings is a whole different thing. That's like an in the moment, I've got to have this food now. And that we dealt with in our previous tapping circle. So we won't really be touching on that today. Cravings and disordered eating are rarely about the food. They are about our emotions. When we can better articulate and process our emotions, we no longer need to rely on eating as a misguided way of doing that. And we become more mindful about eating. So in this session, I'm going to guide you through sort of a script that I've created, some examples. And as Tina said, please tap and tap and talk along with, well, you'll tap with me and repeat what I say or modify it as you see fit. And um, also considering, sometimes it's good to consider the phrases that you don't think fit because they might be tapping into an unconscious pattern. So you might just say, 
maybe it's this, you know, if you're not sure, if I say something that doesn't quite fit, maybe I eat when I feel guilty, even if consciously you don't really think that's true. Okay. Um, so let's see. Um, tapping is most effective when we are very specific about where what we're feeling and where we're feeling it. So I'm going to guide you through getting in touch with that. And that's how you get the best result. When we tap on too general a thing, you know, I, I eat too much, you're not getting to the root of the issue. All right. So to that end, I want you to, if you care to close your eyes and think about the last time, and maybe it happened not too long ago, you found yourself sitting in front of an empty ice cream container or an empty bowl that used to contain potato chips or nuts or whatever your your go-to snack is. I want you to imagine it. You're, you're in front of this empty container. See it in your mind. All right. Eating is pleasurable. You enjoy eating that food. But now when you're looking at how much you ate, finishing that ice cream, finishing that big bowl of chips or nuts or cookies. Sometimes we feel pain, shame, guilt. We're always moving toward either pleasure or pain. Sometimes we do things for pleasure in the end they cause us pain. So what do you feel afterward? After you've finished this, imagine what's the feeling? What are you telling yourself? And if you can make some notes, if you need to, feel free to write it down. If you need to pause to go get some pen and paper, feel free to do that. Are you feeling guilty? Are you feeling shame? Are you angry with yourself? Did you violate some food rule you had? Or did you just sabotage some goal you had for yourself? Are you feeling comfort? Are you feeling a combination of these? More than one thing can be true at the same time. So tune into that and then rate that emotion on a scale of one to 10. With 10 being off the chart, that's like the most extreme amount of emotional charge, stress about the issue you could feel. All right, now tune back into that image and that feeling I'm trying to think for me, I think it's a combination of sort of guilt and disgust and like, ugh, like, you know, like, why did I do that? Um, and for me, that kind of feeling lives, interestingly, ironically enough, in my gut, right? When I have feel that feeling, the feeling is actually in the body. What we call it is just a label for what's going on in the body. Where do you feel it in your body? Does it feel like a rock sitting somewhere? Is it a knot? Does it feel like a big wad of cotton? Or is it a spinning, cloudy feeling? Does it have shape? Does it have a color? Texture? Temperature? Movement? Is it static? Is it spinning? Is it vibrating? All right. I want you to make notes on that and give those somatic or body feelings a number on the one to 10 scale as well. All right, now we're gonna start by setting, creating what we call our setup statement, which begins with the exposure and acceptance. So let's say, um, and, when we say this, the setup statement, that's when we tap on the side of the hand. My setup statement is going to be, even though I feel guilty for eating that whole container of ice cream, and it feels like a swirling green whirlpool in my gut, I still deeply and completely love and accept myself. Now, just a note here about that last phrase. If you have resistance to saying, I still completely love and accept myself, you can simply say, I accept myself with these feelings, or I'm okay, or some other 
phrase that indicates acceptance, okay? We're gonna do this a total of three times. Even though I feel guilty and disappointed with myself, really, for eating that whole container of ice cream, and it feels like a swirling green whirlpool in my gut. And this feeling is at a seven for me. I still deeply and completely love and accept myself. One more time, even though I feel guilty for eating that ice cream. And it feels like a swirling green whirlpool in my gut. I still deeply and completely love and accept myself. Okay. Now, we're just going to use reminder phrases as we tap through the rest of the points. Top of the head. I can't believe I finished that whole container of ice cream. Eyebrow point. It was so delicious. Outside of the eye. But now I feel guilty. Under the eye and disappointed under the nose that I ate the whole thing. Chin, I'm so disappointed with myself. Collarbone, I really don't wanna be eating so much sugar. Beer hug or under the arm. I was doing so well, and then I screwed it up. Now the finger points. I ate too much ice cream. I really enjoy ice cream. Finger. But it seems once I get started, I just can't stop. Once I open that ice cream, gamut point, and dig in with that spoon, back to the top of the head, just one more spoon, and then another spoon, and then another spoon, eyebrow, and before I know it, I've eaten the whole thing. That's out of the eye. And I didn't even realize it until I'm scraping the bottom of the container under the eye. I don't know how I managed to eat that whole pint of ice cream under the nose. Now I feel so guilty. Chin and disgusted with myself. Collarbone, I'm disappointed. I was doing so well. And all this guilt and disappointment, it just feels like a whirlpool of green guilt in my gut under the arm. This swirling green whirlpool in my gut. Finger points from overindulging, overeating, just can't stop once I start. It's like it takes on a mind of its own. It's like I'm in a trance. Just one more spoonful, I tell myself. Just one more spoonful. Just one more spoonful. Just one more spoonful. Top of the head. And before I know it, I've eaten the whole thing. Eyebrow. Oh, why can't I stop? Outside of the eye. It feels good to eat that ice cream. Under the eye. I enjoy the ice cream. Under the nose. I deserve to have that ice cream. 
chin. But maybe it would be better for me to just have a small serving. Collarbone. I can't believe I ate the whole thing. All this guilt under the arm, losing control over my eating. Top of the head, oops, sorry, finger points, eating mindlessly, eating unconsciously. Spoonful after spoonful. At some point, I don't think I was even tasting the ice cream. I'm not sure if I even really enjoyed all of the ice cream, but I still couldn't stop. All right, let's take a pause here. I'm going to take a deep breath and have a drink of water. And take a moment to check in with yourself, both the feeling that you defined, disappointment for me, guilt, disappointment, self-loathing, disgust, so I started at a seven and now maybe I'm down to um, a three or four and the feeling in my gut is definitely down to about a two. I want you to check in with yourself and see where, where your ratings are and also think about what came up for you, if anything, during the course of the tapping or even the suggestions that I make with the phrases. Did something occur to you? Did you remember something? Maybe an event to when you started eating or when eating became for something other than nutrition. When did you begin eat, when did you begin eating this particular food even as a way to satisfy a pleasure, a comfort, or something else. Mm -hmm. So, if I may, <clears throat> if I may chime yeah. in, yes, please. Um, for um, for me, yeah, it, it was um, about forgetfulness. It, I knew that I should only eat a certain quantity, but in the moment because I enjoy the taste, the texture, I forgot to mm. control myself. Mm -hmm. And instead of one, two bites, more than one or two bites. <laughs> right. I think that's and, what happens with the ice cream too, like the smoothness. Mm -hmm. And that's a very important point, Tina, yeah. is like, yes, tuna, is it the crunch? Is it the chewing? Is it the smoothness that's giving us that sense of satisfaction yeah sorry mm -hmm. go on and the other thing is lesson 30 teaching that many of us grow up with is about not wasting food so whenever we start eating something we were told as children oh we have finished everything in the bowl the plate don't waste food other people some people out there don't even have food to eat Right. And, and so somebody else there is forced, starving. Yeah. 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 So we force ourselves to finish what we have, even though right. it's uh, unconscious um, behavior because it was ingrained into us right. in right. young days. Yeah. And I, I was going to, and I actually wanted to tap on that. I have that in my notes because a couple of people have talked about that since. Or, or share it since our, our live circle mm -hmm. about just that and all this stress and pressure about finishing everything on your plate and leaving your plate clean 
um, and how ingrained, what a strong programming that is so that whatever we put in front of ourselves, we have this compulsion to finish it um, because that's the program. And also maybe there's a thought that I don't know when I'll have a chance to eat this again. Mm -hmm. I remember some years ago when I was really addicted to sugar, if there were cookies put out somewhere, I would just keep eating until the cookies were all gone. Like there was just no such thing as leaving some a cookie on the plate. And that was part of my sugar addiction, but also part of the fact that, well, you know, somebody's got to eat it. I don't know, but you know, there are all these different things. So just to put some ideas out, out there for anybody watching the idea of not being able to stop once you start, not having control. Um, this numbing, this idea of just kind of getting into this zone of eating. I know sometimes with this, you know, the ice cream, the scooping, like just getting to a zone, maybe watching TV become very, we definitely become mindless. Mm -hmm. Or the idea that I deserve, maybe I had a really hard day. Something very upsetting happened. Now I, I, I deserve to have this ice cream. Mm -hmm. And in spite of anybody or what my mother would say or what have you, I'm going to have this. Mm -hmm. And just like Tina talked about, I have to finish all the food on my plate. Um, we were told to clean our plates, to don't be wasteful. Our parents would really be upset with us about wasting food because if you wasted food, you're wasting money. And also the, you know, the starving children in Africa line we were getting given. So these are all things that really program our eating. Or if we were given food, given a treat uh, when we were good, if that was a way that love was shown to us growing up, mm -hmm. that's a, a big, big, has a big effect on, on people and their, their eating habits. Okay. okay. Let's get so, right into it. Yes. So, um, all right, I'm going to go on and um, with this round, tap into an event that may, may have triggered this eating. Okay. So this is another example. So Again, let's suppose a time when we had that food. Um, the example I'm going to get, this is imaginary. Let's say when I was in third grade, I was mad at my mother for showing my sister favoritism. And I punished her by eating a whole bunch of cookies that she had baked to take to a meeting. All right. So now I'm remembering the literal sweet revenge and how it was my way to scream, notice me. All right. So I'm going to tap on that and see if any of this resonates. So even though I notice that sometimes I eat as a way of getting back at someone, maybe getting back at my mom for that time when I was in third grade and she showed my sister favoritism, I still deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I'm remembering a time when I ate all of my mom's cookies because my she showed my sister favoritism. I still deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though when I was in third grade, my mom showed favoritism toward my sister and I ate a whole bunch of the cookies she baked to try to get noticed. I still deeply and completely love and accept myself. Let's go through the points, top of the head. Maybe I eat as a way of revenge. I, maybe I overindulge when I'm angry. That's side of the eye. Maybe I sometimes overindulge when I want attention under the eye. Maybe I sometimes overindulge when what I'm really craving is love under the nose. That time when I felt ignored by my mom. That time when I felt unloved by my mom. Collarbone, it seemed like she only paid attention to my sister. My sister got all the attention under the arm. Sometimes I felt invisible.
finger points. Sometimes I felt unnoticed. I felt unloved. Maybe I felt like I didn't matter. And maybe acting out with food was the only way I got attention. Gamut point. Because mom was really upset. She needed those cookies for that meeting. So boy, did I get attention. Top of the head. I got lots of attention for eating those cookies. Eyebrow point. She certainly noticed me then. Outside of the eye. I'll show her for showing favorites. Under the eye. She definitely noticed me then. Under the nose. I'm starting to see that sometimes that pattern continues till today. Chin. And maybe I overindulge when I'm feeling unnoticed. Collarbone. Or maybe I'm feeling unheard or unloved with my, you can fill in the blank, husband, boyfriend, partner, what have somebody significant in your life? Under the arm. But who am I really punishing now when I overindulge? Finger points. Not punishing my mother. It doesn't punish her. When I overindulge, I feel a loss of control. So it's really like I'm punishing myself. Damn it, point. What if I could eat without punishing myself? Top of the head. What if I could just eat and enjoy what I eat? Eyebrow point. I like the idea that I can eat in moderation. Outside of the eye even ice cream under the eye or chips under the nose or other crunchy snacks. Chin. It's okay to enjoy these things. Collarbone. I don't have to completely deny myself. under the arm or beer hug, but I do like the idea of eating in moderation. Finger points. I like the idea of having control when I eat. I choose to be mindful with my eating. And enjoy what I eat. Let's take a break here. Take a deep breath. And a drink of water.
And as we do at the end of every round, check in, mm -hmm. see what shifted, what insights, how you're feeling mm -hmm. about your eating. Doesn't it help when we can articulate, when we can kind of pinpoint why we do what we do? I, I really think it gives us so much more control then. You can make mm -hmm. conscious choices now about what you eat, when you eat, how much you eat. Okay. Start creating, start creating new healthy habits, mm -hmm. right, Tina? Yeah. Okay. Hey. Okay. Let's wrap this up. Yes. All right. So now we're going to move on since time, due to the time constraint, we're going to end with a, a positive round. Okay. And I do encourage you after this to continue tapping on your own, or you could reach out to Tina or myself and work with us one-on-one -on -one to go further into this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, let's start on the side of the hand. Even though I have a habit or pattern of eating when I'm bored, stressed, feeling unloved, procrastinating, or avoiding other uncomfortable feelings, I choose to tune into those feelings and tap and breathe through them. Even though I have a habit or pattern of eating when I'm bored, stressed, procrastinating, or avoiding other uncomfortable feelings, I choose to be mindful with my eating. Even though I have a habit or pattern of eating to avoid uncomfortable feelings, I choose to be mindful in my eating. Let's go through the points. I like the idea that I'm tuned in to my body's needs. Eyebrow point. I drink water when my body needs hydration. Outside of the eye. I eat when my body needs nutrition. Under the eye. It's okay to enjoy food under the nose. It's okay to enjoy treats. I choose to be mindful with my eating. I deserve to enjoy my food. Sorry, collarbone. I didn't announce it. Under the arm. I deserve to enjoy my food without guilt or shame. Top of the head. And even though there may be, sorry, you're right, finger points. Thanks, Tina, <laughs> forgot the finger points. Even though there's more to unpack here, it is safe to put it aside and come back to it another time. I choose to put it aside now and allow myself more time to gain more insights and allow myself the time gamut point to ponder my actions. All right, let's take a deep breath here. And another drink of water and continue to drink. There still will be energy shifting over the next few hours and to the next day, you may still get things coming up, things that you remember, new insights. You might start to feel differently about the food that you're thinking about or thinking on, and we would love to hear from you. So feel free to email us with any questions or reactions, anything you want to share with us about how you did with this.